At the time when hundreds of Cuban mercenaries were killing thousands of black brothers in Angola on Soviet orders. Well, if Prime Minister can do that idiocy, what do you expect from Walter Cronkite or Dan Rothers or some other, I don't want to use strong words, who come to my country? This is what happens. This is one of such soberly thinking politicians, as your media calls them. A picture is taken from Time magazine. And they describe in rhapsodic terms how this beautiful intellectual dances with a Moscow bride in Moscow wedding palace. What you don't understand, that he may think that he's a great politician, charismatic leader who found a common language with the Russians. Look at the faces of KGB behind him. They think he's a total idiot. <laughs> he does not realize that this is not just an ordinary wedding. It is a special occurrence, a stage performance to impress people like uh, Edward Kennedy. I can forgive 11-year-old little monkey like Samantha Smith, uh, your girl who comes to Russia on invitation of Comrade Andropov. She comes back and she says, look, Russians are just like us. They're nice people. Sure, we are nice. We have two hands. We have one head. We go to bathrooms just the way you people do. We make love. We make babies, too. We love them. She may not know the difference between the systems. And I can forgive Samantha Smith. She's only 11 years old. But I cannot forgive a political prostitute like Edward Kennedy. <laughs> just to show you what happens on occasions like this, if you think I'm just pulling your legs or other parts of your anatomy, believe me, Edward Kennedy is not taking part in a regular Soviet wedding. This is what I was doing as a Novosti Press agency agent. This is myself. On the left probably is the same bride, or maybe different, and three impressed journalists. Just exactly like Edward Kennedy, they are very happy to see regular Soviet or Russian wedding. It is not regular. You understand, I hope, what I'm talking about. This is another type of activity. I'm on the background under the red spot with a group of writers, journalists from developing countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America visiting regular kindergarten. They don't realize it is not an ordinary regular kindergarten. It is a special kindergarten, even though by American standards there is nothing special. But in the Soviet Union, it is specially organized to impress foreign journalists. The ordinary one looks like this in the middle. It was published by mistake in a Canadian government publication, and the caption says that this is a regular daycare center in Siberia. What this Dean Witz didn't realize, it is not a daycare center. It is a prison for children of political prisoners. Of course, we don't want to sh to you to see these things like that. We want you to see pictures like this. That's what my job. And my job was to isolate your media from pictures like that. This is myself with a copy of Luke magazine. In 1966-67, I was attached by the KGB to a group of Americans who visited my country. They spent their one year, 12 of them, to bring you back that package of what they call information. Millions of Americans looked through this magazine. They didn't realize that the big shrieking lie is right here on the front cover of this magazine. This morning I was talking to a lady from a local newspaper. And she couldn't, see it. she couldn't see the lie, she couldn't tell me. And she is a journalist. Maybe some of you tell me, what is the lie? Where is the, the lie on the, on the front cover of Look magazine? No, modern building is just a photograph. I prearranged this photograph for Philip Harrington, photographer of Look magazine. 50 years. And this is not. No, you just illustrate my point. You don't know where the lie is because you are victims of disinformation. The biggest, fattest lie is right there, Russia. There is no such country, my dear friends. Russians are ethnic minority in a multiracial country. There is no Russian government. First of all, there is no government, period. Government does not govern in USSR. Power does not belong to the government. Power in USSR belongs to a bunch of self-imposed criminals who call themselves Politburo, top of the Communist Party. And they are not all Russians. Comrade Stalin was Georgian, Comrade Mikoyan was Armenian, Comrade Khrushchev was Ukrainian, Trotsky and Sverdlov were Jewish, Pelcha was uh, Estonian, Comrade Kusinen was Finn, and there are many other ethnic representatives in Poland. Of course, there are Russians too. There is no Russian army, there is no Russian invasion in Afghanistan. There is a communist army and a communist invasion in Afghanistan. Russians are not coming to your country. Communists may come to your country, and it will not be brought to you people by Russian tanks. Use your brains, please, if Russian or Soviet army invades your country. Do you know what will happen to that army? Think. Right. They will disappear in your liquor stores.
Now, please try to understand that this is not a semantic slip of tongue. It's not an inaccuracy. Russia and Soviet Union are not interchangeable words. Why do you think your journalists for many years try to convince you that what you are dealing with is Russia? Why? Simple. It's the trick. It's the result of Soviet propaganda, which is as old as mankind itself. We try to scare you with non-existent threat, Russians. Russians are peaceful people, probably the most peaceful on earth. We are fed up with war. We've been fighting for more than a thousand years. We are sick and tired of wars, but we are forced to go to war by the same bunch of megalomaniacs in Kremlin who receive billions of dollars of your taxpayers' money and your credits and your technology and computers. Do you understand the difference between self-imposed dictatorship and my nation? Or you don't? Well, it's high time you should understand it. Russians are no threat to you. This is a trick to scare you with Russians. Meanwhile, you don't notice that the main danger comes closer and closer to your doorstep. And that danger is not coming from Russians. It comes from the system of one big government. Socialism, fascism, Nazism, totalitarianism, whatever it is. However you describe it. This is the result of my work. I've been working with the dim wits of your mass media. There they are, the whole group of Americans in Stalingrad, including Philip Harrington, look photographer. On the background, you can see the statue of Mother Russia, a big oversized lady with overdose of hormone. <laughs> this is the area. It is about 10 times bigger than Statue of Liberty in New York City. And this place is constructed by Communist Party propaganda for indoctrination purposes. You can see this picture from the Soviet media. Soldiers are pronouncing the Pledge of Allegiance to the Communist Party under the statue of Mother Russia, right? And yet the same picture was published in Luke magazine in the center fold and the article which follows describes that every Russian is very proud to see this monument. Do you understand what they are doing and what they are saying to you? Could you find me one American Vietnam War veteran who is proud to see monument in Washington, D.C. with names of thousands of your boys who were killed in Vietnam for nothing, for peace with honor, as Dr. Kissinger calls it. Could you find me one veteran of Vietnam who is proud of that? What do they feel, these Americans boys, who survived that massacre? What do they feel? They feel sad. They feel sorry. They feel disgusted and betrayed. They were sent there for 12 years and they were not allowed to win that war. When they come back, people like Jane Fonda spat in their face. How do they feel? Please explain me. Proud? Now, why do you think that my nation is so dumb to feel proud when they look at the, at the idiocy like that? We feel the same way. We feel sad. We feel sorry. We feel disgusted. We feel betrayed because we lost... 20 million of my father's, mother's, sisters and brothers in a war which brought us nothing, which brought restoration of Stalin's power, more blood, more death, more concentration camps to my nation. We don't feel proud at all. Luke magazine lies to you, same way as many other papers today, right now, lie to you about the Russians. After several successful operations like Look Magazine, I was transferred back to the Soviet Embassy in India. You can see me on the right with a microphone. On the left side, Indira Gandhi, Prime Minister of India, talking to my KGB supervisor, who incidentally now in your country. His name is Leonid Mitrokhin. He's in New York City working for United Nations. He's a high-ranking KGB expert. Why would you think a Prime Minister of a free independent country, biggest democracy in Asia, talks to KGB persons? The trick is that A, India never was biggest democracy in Asia. Your newspapers lie to you. India was biggest autocracy in Asia. It was ruled by Nehru's family. First Jawaharlal, then his daughter Indira, and now her son. Second, Indira Gandhi is not a non-aligned leader. It is not a neutral country. Indira Gandhi was in the Soviet pocket from the first moment she stepped into her office. Indira Gandhi didn't do anything without coordinating her decisions with the Soviet embassy, with us. 